Hi everyone, this is Rachelle. Thanks for clicking on my video and thanks again for allowing me to do my videos off screen while I'm recovering from some spine issues that I'm having. So as you can see, this is a story time and it's all about the time my children were going to beat up our neighbor. And before I get to the actual incident, I need to give you some background on this family. So the family consisted of a mother and father and two children. There was an older child that was a girl that was 10 years old and there was a little boy that was six years old. Now this family was or one of the white families in our neighborhood and this family terrorized our entire neighborhood from the moment that they moved in. The parents we suspected were druggies and the children were unruly and disrespectful. The little boy and the little girl one day took a bat and went and beat on our neighbor's brand new car. Brand new. This neighbor was a police officer. He actually called the police on them, on the children, and filed a, you know, a complaint against them for damaging his property. The little kids would run through the neighborhood barefoot, tearing out flowers, sneaking into your house if you had your screen door open. Uh, if you had pets, they would run up and throw rocks at them. They, if you tried to tell them don't run out in the street when cars would, were coming, they would curse you out. Just all kinds of things. Now let's get to the parents. <clears throat> Excuse me. They would have an argument that would spill out onto the street like they were oblivious that they were no longer in their house. The wife would be half dressed, maybe a t-shirt and panties, and they would just be outside arguing and fussing at each other and just, you know, creating a scene. One neighbor had thrown a cookout in their backyard and they had about 50, 60 people over, it was people from their job, their family, and just a beautiful cookout in the backyard. Right in the middle of the cookout, the female neighbor came tumbling out the house, cursing and drunk and walking through the neighborhood, through the backyard with the negligee on. She was so drunk, she wandered into this neighbor's cookout with the see-through negligee on. The neighbor had to take her and guide her back into the house. And she came back out and just sat on the back porch there with her legs cocked for everyone to see all of her goods, children and all. She wouldn't go back in the house. So now that I've given you a little background on this family, I'm gonna take you to the day where my family had a run-in with them. So prior to this run-in, my daughter had befriended this family's 10-year-old. In our neighborhood, there weren't that many children, so my daughter's options were limited. So when this family moved in, before we knew what trouble they were, my daughter had been playing with them. So as the neighborhood found out about the family, I kind of banned my daughter from, you know, playing with them, at least at their house, because too much would be happening over there. We couldn't stop their children from coming to our house. We literally could not stop them. Um, so my daughter ended up playing with them off and on. So this one particular day, the mother comes over my house when I get off work, she walks up the driveway just as I'm pulling in and she is hot. She tells me that my daughter threw a rock and damaged 
the siding on her home. And she was going on and on about how she had babysat my daughter and that, you know, I should be grateful for all that she's done for me. Now, I'm going to back up and say this lady never babysat a day for my daughter, a second for my daughter. I would not have let her babysit my daughter with all that was going on. And actually, my daughter was in daycare. So as we were standing there, I noticed that either she was drunk or she was high off something. So I brought my daughter out and asked her, you know, did you throw a rock at the house and, you know, damage their aluminum siding? So my daughter told me she did throw a rock at the house, but she did not remember there being a hole in it. So I told the lady to get an estimate, more than one, and I would pay for any damages since my daughter did say that she threw a rock at the house. Now, that didn't make her happy. All while I'm telling her to, you know, just give me an estimate and I would pay for it. Um, you know, she told me that I couldn't afford it, blah, 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 um, that I thought I was better than her. And I told her, look, lady, I'm offering to pay for it, get an estimate and come back to me with that estimate but right now get out my yard because she had started cursing and yelling at me now as i mentioned in several videos i am only 411 this lady was about 59 now about the time she started yelling and screaming at me my son came out the front door her myself and my daughter we were standing in the driveway so I continue to tell the lady, look, ma'am, I'm not yelling and screaming at you. You are in my driveway. I've already told you that I will pay for any damages, get an estimate, bring it to me, and I'll pay for it. So I could see that I wasn't getting any sense into her. So I turn and walk away. And then next thing I hear is her saying, why you bitch and then when I turn around I turn around as my kids are yelling and what she had done is picked up a brick that was um, in my little flower bed you know how you you decorate your flower bed with these big stones well she had picked up one to club me in my head when she did that my son who was 18 at the time grabbed her and like yanked her and you know grabbed the rock and threw it on the ground this big huge stone and as I'm standing there I see my 10 year old daughter running up with a lawn chair to try to club the woman in the head now I had to stop my daughter from clubbing her in the head and then turn around and try to pry my son's hands from off her throat. So I go over to him <clears throat> and he has his hands like entangled and twined in her blonde hair and another hand on her throat. Foam is coming out of his mouth and he's jerking her, telling her, if you ever hit my mother, what all he would do to her. So I told him, I said, son, let her go. Because if you hit her, you are 18 years old. This is a white woman with blonde hair. You're going to jail tonight and they're going to fuck you up before they take you. And I had to stand there and reason with him, take your hands off of her. Now, in the meantime, my daughter goes back and gets the chair because now the lady is lunging at my son and I guess my daughter who was 10 years old, that's right, 10 years old, third, fourth grade, she's running down the driveway again with this chair. When I tell you people that this was the funniest thing in hindsight that I've ever seen because my kids were hot. Now, I must give you also a little background on my kids. They are very quiet. I had never seen them 
angry, you know, in a fighting mode. I didn't even know that they could fight. But that day, I was between both of them. Look, Scott, take your hands off of her. Don't hit her. Oh, my God, Amber, put that chair down. Don't hit this lady in the head. Eventually, we got, you know, the lady to leave. I got my kids in the house, got them calmed down. And as we were sitting there and they were like telling me, mom, the only reason why we grabbed her and the only reason why we were hitting, going to hit her is because she was trying to hit you in the head with the stone. And I laughed and I told them that had she hit me in my head with that stone and I wasn't knocked unconscious, I would have whooped her ass out in that driveway. And especially since she was in my driveway. So we laugh and you know, talk about the family and how crazy they are. So I tell my kids, come on, you know, we had a rough little thing there. Let's go out to dinner. So we leave and go away for about two and a half, three hours. And then we come back. And when we come back, there is a police business card stuck in our screen door that has a message written on it that tells me, that it's very important that I contact them. So I go in the house, dial the number that's on the business card, and they say Columbus Police. I tell them who I am, what my address is, and that they left a card in my door. Um, the police officer tells me to hold on, and then another police officer comes on the phone. And this police officer was a female, and I ask her what the problem is. And she says, um, we were called out by your neighbor because your children attacked her and um, she wanted to file charges on your children. So I listen and then I go to explain what happened because the neighbor told the police that we came to her house and you know, all of this occurred in her driveway when in all actuality it occurred in my driveway so as I go to explain the police officer cut me off she said ma'am there's no need to to explain and I said no if she's planning on pressing charges I need to you know come to the you know your precinct and tell my side of the story um you know I don't want it to stand with what she said. Um, the police officer told me that the lady said that my 10 year old daughter um, had clubbed her in the head and that my son had choked her and dragged her down the driveway. Now, it was partially true, but it wasn't as bad as she said it was. So the police officer goes on to explain to me that they did come out and they came out and came to my house and knocked on the door and a neighbor across the street um, came over to ask them why were they at my house. So I'm also gonna back up again. The neighborhood that we lived in, we were the only blacks, the only blacks on, in the neighborhood. So this neighbor across the street, when they saw the police at my house, they came over and asked why they were there. The police evidently explained to the neighbor what was going on and why they were there. They were called due to reports that my family had attacked this white woman that lived in the neighborhood. So the, the police tell me that not only did the neighbor across the street come, but the neighbor to the left of me came and then the neighbor diagonal from me, diagonally from me across the street, came over as well. And the police officer told me that what the neighbor said is that my family did nothing to this woman. She told me that, um, that all my neighbors told the police that we were a nice family, we didn't bother anything, anyone, that it was just a mother with her two children, and that we the mother just worked and you know these were well-behaved children who you know everyone in the neighborhood liked and they were talking about 
my children. They went on to explain to the police that the lady and her children actually came over and were about to attack me. And the only reason why my kids stepped in is because the lady had a stone over her head about to club me in the head with it. And so I was a little shocked that these white neighbors stepped up in my defense. Me not even really having spoken to them pretty much. My kids were friends with everyone on the street, but other than me driving up, waving, and occasionally having a talk with, you know, one or two for a minute or so, we really hadn't had, or I really hadn't had any conversations with them. So the police officer told me, um, you know, you don't have anything to worry about. Your neighbors spoke up for you. And they also told us how that family has been terrorizing the neighborhood. They told me, um, they went on to tell me that if I had any other problems um, with this family, that I should give them a call back. Because they said that when they told the mother that they were not going to be pressing any charges or taking any type of report, the mother got angry. And you know how they say, oh, I'm going to get a lawyer. You're not doing your job. But this whole situation, the entire situation was hilarious after the fact. I have included pictures of my children. This is my daughter when she graduated from high school. And this is her and my son. But if you met my children and how quiet they are, you would not believe how they snapped into action that day to protect their mother. It was the funniest thing. To this day, um, we laugh about that. At the time it happened, my son was 18. He's now 29. At the time it happened, my daughter was 10 and she's now 21. If you would, would have seen my daughter running down the driveway with this big, heavy lawn chair raised over her head to clobber this woman in the back, it all it needed was music to it. It was the funniest thing that I have ever seen them do. My son, me having to tell him, please get your hands off her neck. They're going to cart you to jail. And before they take you, they're going to fuck you up right here on the street. When I, every time I think about this and think about how they jumped into action that day to protect their mommy, it is hilarious. So thank you for listening to my story time. And as I said, I've included pictures of my two and hope you enjoyed it. You have a great day. Bye-bye.